straight to tonight's top story. And police say it was a miracle that no one was killed after a dissident car bomb exploded outside Newry Courthouse last night. Police officers were given just 17 minutes to evacuate the area before it exploded. One eyewitness who drove past the bomb seconds before it went off says he cannot believe how lucky he is to be alive. Sharon O'Neill reports. The burning wreck of a car packed with explosives. The force of the blast was so powerful it could be heard 18 miles away in Castle Wellen. And minutes before it blew up, people enjoying a night out passed within yards of it. Some had just left a nearby church hall. Robert Wallace was in a taxi with his two friends. Do you feel lucky that you're standing here today? Well, very, very lucky. You know, I think if it had been five seconds earlier, I mean, we would have got the full blast of it. The bomb, which contained 250 pounds of explosives, went off outside Newry Courthouse at 10.37 last night as police evacuated the area. But the bombers gave them just 17 minutes warning. The bomb went off and it rocked the taxi. And um, everybody had started to run out onto the street. And um, there's a local pub just on the corner called Brass Monkey, and people just running out of it to see what had happened. And I got around and you could see all the debris flying and laughing on the street. Police said it was a miracle no one was killed. It is clearly uh, reckless at the best and clearly callous at the worst. You know, there is absolutely no excuse for bringing uh, bombs onto our streets in any shape or form. But added to that, the time in which people were given was severely limited. The explosion damaged the gates of the courthouse and blew out the windows of a nearby church. I think we're very fortunate that there hasn't been any loss of life or any injury uh, to persons. Uh, the police have said that it is a miracle uh, that no one was injured or there was any loss of life. Yeah, so, I mean, in that sense, we are very fortunate. This is the closest we could get to the scene. You can see the courthouse behind me. And while this road may seem quiet, behind the second cordon, police and forensic experts are combing this area for clues in the hunt for the bombers. The cordons which prevented us seeing the car were lifted this afternoon. Police received three calls between 10 o'clock and 10.22. Melissa Moran had just put her six-year-old son Ryan to bed when the bomb went off. It was obviously a big loud noise, but um, we could hear like, a sort of shake a bit as well, and then we went upstairs to check if I was okay. And then after that, then we got messages from friends saying he's okay, and if he's wanted, he's going to come and stay with us and things like that. You had no idea at that point it was a bomb? Not a clue. They were telling us that there was a bomb and that the streets had to be evacuated. I was frightened, of course, where I was there. You know, where I was in bed, and I don't know, it's hard to explain. I'm still a wee bit shaky, like, because you don't know if there's going to be more. Norman Cotis and his wife, Urena were one of a number of families evacuated from this street. Were you scared? Yeah, a little bit. You know, you listen, you, you go sleep and you listen, bang. And that's it. Were you scared for your little daughter? Yeah, of course. You know your little daughter and you live there and you listen, bang. And you don't know what happened. Very frightening. Were you afraid? Yes, of course. Really. Newry has been a regular target over the years. This bombing comes as families of nine police officers killed in a mortar attack on Newry Police Station marked the 25th anniversary of their deaths. Sharon O'Neill, UTV Live in Newry. Politicians have been united in their condemnation of last night's attack. It's the latest incident in an escalating dissident Republican campaign, as Tracy McGee reports. Just over two weeks ago, Peter Robinson and Martin McGuinness stood shoulder to shoulder after thrashing out a deal on the devolution of policing and justice. But even while the parties were locked in the hothouse negotiations, the dissidents were making their presence felt. A pipe bomb was thrown at Old Park Police Station in North Belfast. Last night's attack in Newry was far more sophisticated than a pipe bomb, but it's as much the inadequacy of the warning as the size of the bomb that has caused outrage today. Police were given only 17 minutes to evacuate the area. It's not the first time dissidents have given an inadequate bomb warning. In 1998, police unwittingly guided shoppers towards the 500 pound car bomb planted in Oma by the real IRA. We all remember the deadly consequences of that. For those bereaved in that atrocity, last night was a chilling reminder. 
terrifying again that uh, this, these people haven't learned any sense from, from the lost Noma. You have 31 innocent souls lost Noma. Surely they should have learned something. The dissonant message on policing and justice is not a subtle one. On Friday night, a van containing a mortar bomb was abandoned outside a police station in Kitty. Last night, the bomb was left outside Newry Courthouse. Dissident opposition to devolution is clear, but local nationalist politicians insist they have no support. I think the intention of, of these people is really to cause despair, uh, to challenge the political progress that's been made. It's no surprise that they've stepped up their activities when we have begun to make some progress. It's no surprise also that they're attacking uh, the, a courthouse at the time that police and justice powers are being transferred across to Ireland. Violence serves no purpose whatsoever. The people who are responsible for this have no support in this area and they have no direction whatsoever. The attack has been widely condemned today. Well, this is the appalling vista, the memory that people will have reawakened and rekindled within them of what the troubles were all about. It's the past. We don't want it to be the present, and we certainly don't want it to be Northern Ireland's future. Speaking in the Assembly, the Ulster Unionist Danny Kennedy accused the Chief Constable and the Secretary of State of underestimating the dissident threat. I and my party have been concerned for some time that the threats posed by Republican dissidents have been viewed with a certain amount of complacency by the Chief Constable and his senior command, and by senior political figures, including the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland in the mistaken belief that these individuals were unrepresentative and lacked the manpower to cause serious problems. It's a claim rejected by the Chief Constable. Certainly there can be no doubt the dissidents have been escalating the number of their attacks with varying degrees of severity. In January, within a week of each other, shots were fired at both Cross McGlen and Bessbrook police stations. That same month, Constable Patter Heffron was critically injured when a bomb exploded underneath his car near Randallstown as he drove to work. So while the politicians continue to grapple with the devolution of policing and justice, here at police headquarters, they're dealing on the ground with those intent on death and destruction. Last night was a clear reminder to everyone that there are elements lurking in the shadows determined to destabilise the political situation. Tracy McGee, UTV Live at police headquarters.